What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today I have a very important video for you, especially if you watched my most recent video talking about where to put players within your minor league organization. Anytime that we cover a video talking about putting players in AAA, AA, single A, whatever it is within your farm system, it is extremely important that I follow up that video with a discussion about playing time and making sure that players are actually playing within your organization. Because that is going to be the main factor in determining whether a player is going to progress in your minor league system or not. You have to make sure that players are actually playing in order to get development out of them. Otherwise, you're not going to see development. And that's coming right out at the start of this video and telling you exactly what you need to know from today's video. The reason that this is so important is exactly what I just stated, and that's the fact that you don't want to have a bunch of players sitting at one position that simply can't play the game. So if we go to my AAA roster, for example, we talked about how all of these players or most of these players are gonna be roughly in that 65 to 75 overall range. That, however, should not be a strict guideline as to who you have in AAA, likewise for AA and single A. There needs to be a little bit more thought put into who goes where. As an example, I can go to my outfield and we see that we have a ton of prospects that are in that triple A eligible range. We have a lot of players here in our farm system in general as well that have the capability to be triple A ball players because of their overall, because of what they bring to the table. However, I'm not going to have every single player that fits into those categories on my AAA team. And whenever I actually go to my AAA roster, you'll see that at the bottom, I'm filling it in with a couple of lower overall players, low 60s. Whereas when I go to my AA roster, there are a couple of higher 60 overall players that could be playing at the AAA level. And again, I kind of talked about this in that last video, but it deserves repeating that just because this player fits that overall does not mean that they should be playing at that AAA level. The reason for that is that you have to find playing time for your players. So while Brennan Malone, this starting pitcher, may be able to succeed at the AAA level, he might not get playing time if I put him up at the AAA level. And because he's a B potential, I want to make sure that he's getting as much playing time as possible. Like I said, playing time is going to be the most significant factor in whether a player progresses or not. You will very often see players within the minor leagues that don't get good playing time and they're not going to progress at the same rate as a player that is getting good playing time. Just as a quick example here, you can see that I have two right field players right now on my AAA roster. Cal Mitchell and Lolo Sanchez. And as you can see, the playing time for these players is going to vary. We only have 215 at-bats for Lolo Sanchez, whereas we have 335 for Cal Mitchell. Generally speaking, that's going to provide more opportunity for Cal Mitchell to develop and progress as a player in comparison to Lolo Sanchez. Likewise, you can often end up with bigger splits than that. One of the best examples is typically catcher. So at the MLB level for for example, you can see we have 307 at-bats with Andy Rodriguez, but only 112 with Henry Davis. And a great example in the minor leagues is 255 with William Nakamura, but only 94 with Fred Berger. That's quite a difference. And again, that's my B potential player that's not necessarily getting playing time. So again, super important factor without drawing it out too much further on that. That is one of the main factors that you need to consider. Well, how do we actually take a look at whether a player is going to get playing time in the minor league system or not? Number one, you have the power to edit the lineups and rotations in your minor league systems. You can manage your minor league teams by in your franchise mode, just moving the right stick left and right so you can see in the bottom right hand corner there i just went to double a now i'm on triple a and you can go back and forth between your teams you can see the standings you can manage the roster and that's how you can operate those minor leagues teams most people however are going to set your minor league teams to auto and that's what i do in fact and the simple way to tell whether a player is going to play or not is whether they're the top player at that position by overall so as you can see cal mitchell because he's a slightly higher overall than lolo sanchez is going to 
get placed in the lineup ahead of Lolo Sanchez. And again, there's a couple other factors here. So while overall does play into that, the system is not going to necessarily weigh the player's potential. Because as a user, you might say, oh, well, this guy's a 66A. He should be getting playing time over the 67C. He's also a year younger. Well, the system's not going to use that logic and do that on their own. And the other major factor to consider here is which positions these players can play. So these are both right fielders, but they're going to have secondary positions. When we take a look at Lolo Sanchez, he can play left field and center field. So that does provide a little bit of flexibility where he can plug into the lineup in other spots. Cal Mitchell can also play left field and center field. And so again, then they're going to compare those players overalls versus the player at those positions. So there's not going to be a whole lot of opportunity for either of these players to play center field because they're a 67 and a 66. And my center fielders in AAA are a 70 and a 68. And in left field, my AAA players are a 71 and a 64. So again, just not going to be a whole lot of opportunity for those guys to get playing time. You can definitely see the splits here between Kanan Smith-Najigba and Mark Lombardo. Kanan Smith-Najigba is 318 at bats compared to 70 for Mark Lombardo. And that is where things really start to be meaningful for you in the minor leagues. So we could, in theory, send a player down for them to get more playing time. So, for example, if I wanted Lolo Sanchez to get even more playing time, and basically the amount of playing time that you would get as a starting double-A player, which might be more beneficial to their development, I might want to swap him with Ryan Velade. And in fact, that actually makes a ton of sense, because what's going to happen is he's going to become the double-A starter, and Velade is going to become the triple-A backup. So they're going to default to Cal Mitchell and Ryan Velade, who I don't see as a long-term solution for this team anyway, is going to get rotational depth types of repetitions at that level. Whereas now Lolo Sanchez is going to be the default starting right fielder and Chavez Young is going to be the backup right fielder. The other thing to consider then again is like what we just talked about. How does he compare against the double A center fielders and left fielders who he's also going to be stacking up against for playing time because he can play those positions. Well, if we go over to our double-A center field, our highest overall is a 59. So we already know that Lolo Sanchez is a higher overall than both our right fielders and our center fielders. We go over to left field and it's a 55. So we are basically guaranteeing that Lolo Sanchez is now our highest overall outfielder, being that those are the positions that he can play in our double-A system. He is going to be defaulted to quite a bit within that lineup, and they're going to basically on auto try to get him into the lineup at any point point they possibly can. That's going to be beneficial for his development, probably more so than sitting behind Cal Mitchell, Travis Swaggerty, Lonnie White, and Kanan Smith-Najigba. So again, I have not done a perfect job of detailed management of my minor league system here this year. It's not been perfect. But again, you're going to want to make sure that you're kind of taking a look at those things, especially when you're deciding playing time for players, because that can make a big difference just scrolling through, I've noticed another example here where we have Nick Gonzalez. Nick Gonzalez is probably good enough that he's getting playing time at third base and shortstop as well, but we could potentially consider moving him down to double A and moving Scott Taylor up to triple A because Scott Taylor is going to be defaulted as a backup and then Nick Gonzalez will be defaulted the starter at second base within that system. That's not necessarily 100% what you want to do with every single player. Again, sometimes, like you can see with Nick Gonzalez, he is still progressing decently. He is still getting quite a few at-bats in that AAA system, even though he's a lower overall than Tucapita Marcano. So you kind of have to conjoin two different theories here, which is what I talked to you about in terms of their overall spread in the fact that you wouldn't really want a AAA player uh, or a player rather that's a, a 69 overall to be in your AA system. And if he grows a little bit more to a 70 overall, you're not going to really want him in your AA system. And just to add on on top of this, there are a couple other strategies. You could send a player down to single A, or you could trade that player away. So a good example is Lucius Venner here at first base, who I really want to be getting all the reps at first base. And he is technically right now because Malcolm Nunez is injured. And so he's gotten 364 at bats. He's batting really well. He's hit a bunch of home runs. So this guy's developing really well as a prospect, but let's say he wasn't. Let's say he wasn't getting in as much because Nunez was healthy. There are a couple of different things that I could do. I could send Nunez down to single A. And then again, Venner is going to be the default 
top double A first baseman, and he's going to be getting all the reps. The other thing that I could do is trade Nunez away to another team so that he's not blocking these high development players that I really want to develop at first base or at any other position, for example. Lucius Venner is a player that I want to develop, so I want to make sure that he's getting as much playing time as possible. 364 at-bats is doing really well, and he's probably batting as a DH sometimes, but that's a player that you need to have starting and getting playing time. What I like to refer to this as is log jamming positions. You do not want to log jam a position so that your high development players can't develop well enough and can't get playing time. Very often it is easy after a few good drafts, a few good trades, a few good off seasons to really log jam your minor league system. It is something that can be pretty hard to avoid and it is something that I recommend paying pretty close attention to because you don't want to log jam jam those A's and B's that do have the potential to help your organization in the long run. When we really start to talk about players like a Nick Gonzalez, for example, we want to make sure that that guy has a chance to succeed because he is a 24 year old 69 overall. We know that he could potentially help our team in the near future. Otherwise, we might need to clear out that position in a number of different ways to help things out. There are a couple other strategies that I want to mention before we end off this video as well. One of those strategies, like I said, with Venner, who is probably playing some DH, is to add secondary positions to a player. So Venner has the third base, left field, and right field secondary positions, which is absolutely fantastic. That means that he can play four quality positions that actually fit his skill set. The ability to play more positions is going to be useful in getting those players playing time and filling them in in the gaps whenever necessary as you progress through those minor league seasons. You'll often see players like Malcolm Nunez for example, who only has that third base secondary position. It may be advisable to go in and edit that player, go to general and go down to their secondary positions and give them something else. So his is only a third base. Why don't we just switch it so that he has all infield positions as his secondary positions? That's going to be huge for him because that now means that he can play first, second, third and short as opposed to just first and third. And it gives him more opportunities to play within games. And the final strategy is to move Move players around. This is not super common within the MLB, but it does happen fairly often when you have players that have good skill sets, especially defensively. You'll see players get moved around from position to position in the minor leagues. And as I've shown you, I have a ton of right fielders, center fielders, and left fielders. So my outfield depth is pretty much stacked here, and I simply can't play all of these players in the minor league. And even if I do move their position, they're not necessarily going to play at another position. But what you can do is help to get get a better distribution. So at shortstop, I only have four prospects, but at center field, I have eight prospects. It may benefit me to take one of these center fielders and move them to shortstop. I may benefit by moving somebody to third base because again, I only have four prospects and you can help to prevent log jams by being flexible like that and moving players around. I am definitely going to have a log jam in center field because of all of these A's and B's that I have and the amount of of them that I have at that position. I'm probably going to benefit in the long run by taking one or two of these players and bumping them over to another position where they're more likely to get more playing time and they're more likely to fit within this organization and not just stagnate in single A or double A or something like that. So those are the strategies you guys can use, but make sure you're focusing on getting your players playing time within the minor league system because it is the single most important factor to whether or not a player is going to progress in MLB The Show and specifically we're on MLB The Show 23 today. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's extremely important that I follow up any discussion about which overalls should be in AAA, AA, single A in your farm system with a discussion about playing time because these two things are directly linked and they are the most important factors if you want to develop your prospects up to help you in a long-term franchise. So I do hope this video was informative and if it was, leave a like down below, comment and subscribe and please come back for the next video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, I hope you have a good one.